Hi, thank you for tuning into this video. I'm Valevan, a PhD student from TU Berlin. In this video, I'm going to talk about my current research project, Quenched Functional Central Limb Theorem for Random Works in Random Environments, Admitting Bounded Cycle Representation. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Jean-Dominique Deutscher from TU Berlin and co-author Martin Luik from University of Mannheim. Imagine a particle lands at the origin of a D-dimensional lattice and starts to perform nearest neighbor random walks along directed edges. How fast and how likely the particle jump along a particular edge is described by the environment it is in, which is a collection of positive jump rates associated to each edge. The environment is drawn from a probability distribution at the time when the particle lands at the origin and it becomes fixed afterwards. In particular, we consider the environment space that each element admits bounded cycle representation with respect to some positive integer parameter n. It means that um, almost every environment can be seen as a collection of directed nearest neighbor cycles with bounded cycle length n. Each cycle has its own contribution to the jump rate of the edge that it traverses, and the cycle weights are always positive and it depends only on the cycle. Correspondingly, the quantity generator when applied to some lattice function f is the sum of positively weighted increments of nearest neighbor jumps. The weight is the edge jump rate. With the cycle structure, it can be exchanged for some of selected cycle weights. Let me give you two simple examples. With five colors, red, yellow, green, blue, and gray, encoding decreasing intensity in jump rates, the graph on the left is an environment that only admits cycles of length two. This belongs to the Werner random conductance model, which is reversible. The reversibility of the model due to the symmetry of the jump rates on the same bond can be easily destroyed by environment that has cycle of length that is greater than two. For instance, environment that consists of only four cycles as in the graph on the right side. Especially here on this bound, the jump rates are highly asymmetric. The intensity is very low in one direction and very high in the other direction. To investigate the macroscopic behavior of the random works in the quantity setting, we give ourselves three conditions. The first one is very trivial, it says that the probability space is invariant and ergodic with respect to any spatial shift in lattice. Second, um, almost every environment admits bounded cycle representation and the cycle weights are always strictly positive. Third, peak moment condition holds for edge jump rates with PQ being two constants that are greater than one and satisfy this inequality. The boundedness on the moment states that the edge rate is not too large, such that its pith moment explodes, and the two rates on the same bounds are not too small, such that its qth moment of the inverse of the symmetric part, which is taken to be their average, explodes as well. In particular, the second and the third condition imply two properties. First, double stochasticity, the sum of the rates jump into a side X equals to the sum of the rates jump out of the side X. Second, the jump rates are regular in the sense that almost every jump rate is positive and finite. With the three conditions we assumed, we prove the quantity function essential limb theorem or quantity invariance principle. Denote xt the position of the particle in the random work that starts from the origin in environment omega. By adding super index i, we refer to its ith coordinate. Our results include first, um, the coordinate process can be decomposed into two parts. First, the martingale part, it is harmonic with respect to the quench generator. The remaining part we call the character, it is without any of the harmonic component. Second, the character of the position is sublinear in the sense that its supremum inside the box is negligible when compared to the size of the box. This implies the character for the trajectory vanishes uniformly in quantity probability under the diffusive scaling. At last, we arrive at the quenched FCLT, denote XTM, the random works under the diffusive scaling. 
And since the character for the trajectory is negligible, the rescaled path can be well approximated by its martingale path, which converges in quenched law to brown emotion with some non-degenerate and deterministic covariance matrix, the entry of which is the expectation of some of weighted dot products of harmonic components. Bounty cycle representation has been previously introduced by Dosh and Kuster in 2008. They assume boundedness and uniform ellipticity of total drum plates at all sites and some strong irreducibility condition. For QFCRT in a more general W stochastic environment, Toth paper in 2008 assume upper bound for the jump rate, strong ellipticity for the symmetry rate, as well as two other conditions on the stream tensor associated with the anti symmetry rate. Strong ellipticity or equivalently boundedness and uniform ellipticity has been lifted in a paper by Andres Dosh and Slowik in 2015 for random conductance model. They assume previously introduced peak moment condition. What's new about our research is that we use analytic methods developed around peak moment condition, which is much weaker than the usually assumed boundedness and uniform ellipticity, since it allows arbitrary small or large jump rates. We extend the QFCRT result to non-reversible environment. In our case, it is formed by bounded cycles. The proof strategy we employ is probabilistic, which has been heavily foreshadowed when I'm presenting the results. To restate, the first is to have martingale decomposition for the trajectory. What has not been mentioned is to construct the character, we rely on sector condition that controls the effects of anti-symmetric part by the effects of symmetric part. This is satisfied by the bounded cycle representation. Second, the character is negligible for especially being sublinear. Third, we apply Helland's martingale FCRT to the martingale part. In particular, in the second subliminality step, we use PDE estimate for subharmonic function to control the character. For instance, we derive energy estimate to control the Dirichlet energy of the cutoff subharmonic function F by the volume, cycle length, upper bound N, supreme moon gradient of cutoff function eta, space average P norm of the jump rate at the site, space average P star norm of F squared, with P star being the Hurt conjugate of P. Together with weighted sublift inequality and most iteration, we get upper bound of the maximum of F inside the box. In the upper bound, the Qth moment condition on the symmetry rate appears in the form of space averaged Q norm of the sum of inverse symmetry rates. To summarize the talk in one sentence, we use probabilistic approach and analytic tools to prove quenched functional center limit theorem for random walks in bounded cyclic non-reversible random environment that is particularly not uniformly bounded and not uniformly elliptic. With the last slide showing a very short list of the references I used in this presentation, I end my talk here. Thank you very much for watching this video. Goodbye and uh, looking forward to meet you at the online conference.